Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. I'm honored being here. Just came over from Germany to talk about my projects. And um, you might have seen my Twitter posts and what we are doing here. Um, I have a couple of projects brought with me, and um, basically I'm going to show you three things. One is how, what, what was the journey building this wearable platform, uh, how we tweaked it to really come to ultra low power consumption, which is important for wearables. And third, I have a bunch of demos with me, which I can show you. Hope everything will work. But let's see how it goes. Um, let's kick off the presentation. Um, I want to talk about how you build wearables quite quickly. We are seeing more and more wearables coming up, uh, like the Fuel Band, Fitbit, so these are more the commercial ones, tracking uh, sport activities. But we are seeing also other things like um, smart watches, uh, having sensors equipped. And uh, all what I'm going to talk about is a journey, how we made it, uh, easy accessible to fab labs, to makers. I'm personally running a fab lab, so that's the origin where this project started off. And um, there was recently a project, um, I think Jonathan did that in Italy, and it won a prize at the Maker Fair in Rome, which is a smartwatch. So you see on the screen there is um, sort of electronics going into a 3D printed housing, uh, but it's loosely coupled, loosely wired. Um, it's just a one-off project, you can't really replicate it, but I think it's a good starting point. Uh, basically, Jonathan was sort of using similar components that I used in, in, in this project. So, what I want to show is the foundation for wireless um, wearable components. We are using the Arduino as a core. So when you used to code in Arduino, you can simply use the Arduino IDE to program it. Um, second, as I said, we wanted to have uh, ultra low power consumption, run the whole thing from a coin cell battery, not from a LiPo battery. Uh, LiPos are pretty bad for wearables because you carry a chemical thing which is toxical close to your body. Uh, coin cells are as well like lithium based batteries but they are sort of better having higher energy density. And um, the third is we wanted to have a communication back to the smartphone uh, which is typically used for user interaction, controlling things, feeding sensor data to your smartphone. So we choose the Bluetooth low energy, which is the right thing to do, to interact from the device to, um, to a smartphone. My name is uh, Guido Berger. As I said, I'm running a small fab lab. In case you want to reach out to me, there's a web page. Uh, there's um, hash uh, blue IoT, or you can follow me on, on Twitter at Guido Dash. Uh, should I go back? You want to capture? Let's try that. So if you want to follow up, you can catch up with me and um, give me a tweet or an email. So when we talk about wearable, uh, what is a wearable at all? What, what, what is the meaning, what is the definition of a wearable? And um, a wearable is, uh, when you look into Wikipedia, that's the source I used here, um, it's a tiny device uh, that you put on top of your clothes, under not your clothes, so, so you wear it basically with you. Maybe you have it on your wrist um, or to your belt, um, but it's supposed to run forever. Basically, there's no switch to switch it on and off because you want to capture activities or sensor data whenever it's needed. So basically, you should forget about power and recharging and all those things. So that's at least the um, definition. But as I said, we are seeing more and more wearables like these Fitbits, Fuel Bits, but they're not you know, made for a specific use case. So I, I was using a fuel band, and uh, when doing exercise, I, I earned fuel points, so that was good. But when I was driving a car, imagine yeah, I earned as well uh, fuel points. So, so it looked like the same, I was doing one hour exercise, I was doing two hours riding a car, but it was giving me the same points. I said, well, that, that's sort of frustrating, I want to have an open platform, 
where people can build their own algorithms, tweak it, build whatever they want, and optimize things. So um, there's no one size fits all for our variables, but there's a platform needed, and that's what we formed, and we will dig now into the platform and how the platform looks like. I ran recently in this lady at MakerCon uh, taking place on Tuesday and Wednesday in the Bay. And she was basically wearing all the variables that are out there. Yeah, You see uh, tons of them, but they are very similar from a build. They have a LiPo in there, maybe they have a display, they have an accelerometer, and maybe they have a Bluetooth or they have a USB to connect to it. So, well, that's one size. It's all the same. You can't change it. You can't, can't do anything. So get rid of that, and we want to look into more creative verbals. Uh, this is a verbal you can buy for kids at uh, Adafruit. I've recently seen that, but you can customize that. So there's a tiny, I wouldn't call it a processor, but there's a kind, tiny compute thing in, which allows to tweak and change the lightning of the LEDs. And kids can place these rockets and, and uh, uh, hearts on it as they want to. So they can make an individual um, verbal, basically. Yeah? So it's a very simple verbal. And a more advanced verbal, what we want to see more and more is um, this little guy. It's done by um, uh, Jens. Um, basically, it's called the ref. It's like, an, um, like a dino, a dinosauria, which fits to your wrist. And it has a tail and it has a head. And it detects sort of emotion. Yeah, so when you behave good, it's uh, waving its tail. Uh, if, if, if you're feeling bad, it's putting it down its neck. So um, that's sort of intelligent variables, uh, individual variables that we want to see. But we need, as I said, a platform to do so, to work with all the sensors and so on. So talking about the journey, um, when I thought, how should I tell you the story, I came up with this picture. You, you probably can't read it, but that sort of the journey started on the left-hand side. Uh, with the idea basically going for a simple Arduino, having our sensors attached to it. But then we found that most of the sensors are working with 3 volts only. So you have always to translate between 5 and 3 volts, you might know that. So basically we decided, let's go the route to go with 3 volts. And actually we found that these coin cells are 3 volt. So that was the kickoff. Basically the first project was a, um, a breadboard like this. Um, by the way, as I'm German, uh, it's called in German Brettaufbau. So if you want to take something with you, Brettaufbau is a German word for breadboard. And I wired that together, and I had an accelerometer in it, I had a little LED display you might see is in, in there, and um, Arduino Mini Pro. So that's how it starts. I found some, some good links how to reduce power consumption, and I was quite lucky that I could measure here in a sleep mode um, 10, 10 micro amps in current consumption. I was quite lucky with that, but I couldn't take that further because it was a breadboard thing and nothing that I can repeat. So then we did some work in the lab and said, well, we might need to build a wristband. So you see down there, there was the first design study we made, how the PCB board could um, fit to a wristband, how we attach batteries. At that time we thought, well, there are two coin savings, may, maybe enough. Uh, we built the schematics and we had a lot of thinkings around should be it a coin cell or should it be a um, thing like, um, let's see, can I switch that? Uh, that one, you might know that's uh, 10 Fabat, that's a super cap. So it delivers a lot of current. You can recharge that quickly. So that was our first thought. Should we go with a super cap? Um, now that we decided we go with a simple coin cell in the first stage and um, uh, we also thought of uh, LiPos as said, well, that might be not a good starting point for, um, for a verbal general open hardware project. Um, to do it right, we did some research and thinking, and uh, we came up with that word cloud, which basically is when you look for verbals, you find all these words in, the, in, in, in articles and uh, the largest works showing the highest number of uh, used um, words. So the outstanding one is activity. So people want to track activity, looks like. 
Um, you see there is, uh, you might find it BLE in there, Bluetooth Low Energy, so that's also common in, in the verbals. And there is an app, you need an app to see data and stuff like that. So, so that gave us roughly an idea how the thing should be designed from a user perspective. But there was something in there which you might see a price tag roughly 150 bucks. That's the typical price point you see for those commercial variables. We want to undercut that with the open platform. And technical wise we did the same. We looked into um, what are the requirements for um, verbal. So typical, it starts with an experimental platform. Um, you think about how fast should your CPU run? Is it an 8 megahertz CPU or 60 megahertz or you need a 48 megahertz CPU? So that has a real impact on the power consumption. Of course, the higher the, the frequency of the CPU is, the higher is the power consumption. So we said by, maybe we, we, we stick to the 8, 8 megahertz. That might be a good starting point for, for the platform. And um, yeah, because one thing I said is power consumption. Power consumption is essential for, for verbals to cut it down. And you see also here in the tech cloud, there's one microamp already as a target came up. We should be roughly run it at one microamp in sleep mode, the managed sleep mode. And um, so this was a basic, basic thinking in a journey how we should design that platform. And then we structured a little bit more what we want to have in there. We wanted to have multiple sensors in there. So we see in a minute a thing real life. Uh, it has a humidity sensor in it, it has moisture sensor in it, uh, humidity and moisture sensor is then attached to it. Uh, a barometer and of course an accelerometer because we want to track activity. Humidity, you might ask why a, why a uh, variable carries a humidity sensor. Uh, when you try it out, you see when you're starting sweating or you're, you're coming with a humidity sensor close to your skin, it detects the moisture around your skin. So maybe there's some interesting things to do with that. And barometer is very simple, you will see that hopefully in the live demo in a bit. Uh, it detects very precisely um, the altitude indoors. I mean, when I raise my arm, it very much detects that the arm is up or the arm is down. It has a density of 15 centimeters. Uh, so you can detect I'm going up the stairs, I'm going down the stairs, I'm in floor one, two, three, four, five, whatever you want to. So it gives you a lot of possibilities um, to, to work with. So we've decided having these three sensors in and um, when looking at the, the devices, we see most of them having sort of an, um, a display attached to it. So here you see, hopefully, um, an OLED display. So we wanted to have a low power display option, at least. We don't need a display because we have a connection to the smartphone anyway. But if you want to have a display, you can simply attach one of these off-shelf um, OLED displays to the device. It's, it's ready just to plug it in and, and you're done. So we wanted to have an Arduino as a core for the development. There's a lot of uh, libraries around supporting those sensors we're using. Or if you want to have another sensor attached to it, you can go in for any uh, Arduino-based sensor library and add things to it. So we wanted to keep really an open platform going here. And the third uh, design pattern was then we wanted to have um, a data transmission. It was already talking about Bluetooth Low Energy. Just give me a hand. Who know what Bluetooth Low Energy is? Who have digged into it? Who, who, who did projects with it already? OK. Um, so the interesting stuff about Bluetooth Energy is it really sends, um, let's say, just tiny data, like 20 bytes of data. And uh, it's very power efficient at the same time and supported by now most of the smartphones, Arduino and iPhone. Um, they're ready to support um, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy as well. You can have a um, Raspberry using Bluetooth Low Energy. So basically that's my home gateway then I will talk later about, which, which hooks up to the device and you can stream data forth and back. We want to stream just event data or sensor data. Uh, so no big deal with multimedia data streaming, just tiny data that's very efficient with Bluetooth Low Energy. But as I said, um, it's a beacon as well. Bluetooth Low Energy gives you a proximity detection. So when you're coming close to a Bluetooth Low Energy device, you can detect very precise how far you're away from that guy. So we built that in. That's, that's part of the, the overall design. Again, it should be simple. We have the sensors in it, easy uh, to use. It should be 
buildable in a fab lab, so that will be open source hardware. You can rebuild it in your own lab, or you can get uh, a board from us, whatever you want to do, or you prefer. And the ultimate goal was to cut it down the power consumption uh, to one microampere, run it off a coin cell, and made it ready for um, energy harvesting. So I show you here one thing that we have already on the bench in our lab. That, that's what we are going to use instead of the coin cell in the next release, so that the release is already in, in, in our lab on, on the bench. You see here these two little guys. They are so-called solid-state batteries. Solid-state batteries can keep 550 microamp. That's roughly nothing. Yeah, think about a LiPo has 100, 2,000 milliampere, 50 micro, that's a thousand of a milliampere, that's nothing. Um, but that guy is pretty smart. It can manage multiple sources. You can have a battery as a backup, you can have a rechargeable battery as a backup, or you can have, as what we are using here, a um, uh, photovoltaic um, uh, cell to, to produce uh, power, or and that's what we are aiming to. You can use sensors to create energy. I mean, harvesting energy. You are moving. You can use sensors producing um, energy. But it's a low, 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 low currents generated, and we need to store that. Therefore, we use the solid-state batteries. And as the overall design is really fitting to that, we can run from there. So we are not using super caps. We are not using coin cells. Uh, we are going for these um, um, super. Um, solid state disks. As said, we want to make it open to everybody to replicate. So the design, um, which I show you in a second, um, is uh, basically we did all the soldering of the unit in, in our fab lab. So you see, this is the guy I'm talking about. Um, it's wearing a Bluetooth low energy module, which is a certified one, by the way. It uses the Atmec. 328 processor. Here you can use the FDI to program it. Here you have breakouts for the displays. Uh, here you see the silver one, that's the barometer, that's the humidity sensor. And on the back side, you see the coin cell. And underneath the coin cell, there is, oh, maybe I have one other one here, you see it better. Um, here you see the SOR meter. And we have an optional GPS. Well, a GPS is not really used for wearables, but if you want, you can hook it up. And um, doing a bunch of projects in the wearable space, we saw typically a starting point is you need to record just the data to see what is happening. When you lift your arm, what, what, what is the measurement of your sensors? Yeah, you know, a three-dimensional thing is not easy to, to catch. So when you see, um, do you know how a 3D accelerator works? Have you ever done that? You want to have a quick insight? Um, I have basically created these three things. So this is a three-dimensional thing. And uh, my hand is the SO rate up, by the way. And when you turn it like that, it measures the G-force um, assigned to, to the, the uh, 3D um, accelerometer. And it's doing with a tiny microelectronics, where whenever you move it, the capacity is changing. So the G-forces of, of, of the Earth are, are forcing, uh, building a force onto this sensor. And whenever this axis is up, you get the maximum force in that axis. And when you turn that axis up, you get the maximum force on that, and, and so on. So when you move it in, 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 in space, you see you might get weird data, and you might process the data. So um, it's a wise idea to have simply an SD card there where you can just write down the data, put it to your Excel, and then see what is going on to find an algorithm to make sense out of the data. That's why we have the SD card on. OK. Um, that was the idea of the basic project. And here you see now the building blocks of the project in more, more detail. Uh, we have used some, some tricks with that. Um, you see in the center the ATMEC processor running at 8 MHz with the FDI and the optional GPS connector and the coin cell battery. Uh, we use the soft serial in Arduino to connect to the Bluetooth module. 
which is quite interesting. Most of the BLE shields that you get for Arduino using heavy libraries to do Bluetooth characteristics and stuff like that. Well, you can do that when you use it on the Bluetooth module as such. But as we, we said, we wanted to do it very easy for people to use it. So we just use a soft serial to open the communication to the Bluetooth. And then we just do a print, printf, sprintf basically to send the data, the sensor data to the Bluetooth and you receive it on your smartphone. So two, three steps basically and you have the data from the sensor streaming to the Bluetooth device. Very straightforward. Uh, we use the SPY to connect to a solar meter. Their solar meter is a special device which is very, very low co power consumption. So basically that's um, the guy who is always on. We said we want to track something, activity. So this guy is the only one who is really working. Uh, all the other components are in sleep mode to cut down the power consumption. And uh, when the uh, co-motion um, accelerometer, that's the ADXL364, um, is detecting a force or a movement, it sends an interrupt to the ATMEC to wake it up. So that's, that's one of the simple tricks we use here. But uh, we needed to do a little bit more. We, we hook up the other sensors via I2C. You can add other sensors hooked up to it as we have a breakout for the I2C uh, C bus. But um, here you see the interrupt coming from the co-motion processor to the Arduino. But still there's a lot of current going on at the Bluetooth. You, the guys who have worked with Bluetooth with low energy know that they always do an advertisement. So they're sending always tiny signals, but it uses power, of course. And the other thing is the Bluetooth module has as well a sleep mode. So it falls just in sleep. And now our Arduino wants to send some data and the Bluetooth module is asleep, we need to wake it up, or we need to keep it awake, awake. So we have another connection from the Arduino to the Bluetooth module to keep the Bluetooth module um, waked up in case we want to send data. So we are not going to lose data, we can send data straight away, we don't need to. So you have to do a lot of thinking around um, the, um, uh, the, the power consumption assessed. Okay, I got signs that we need to go to, to the final demos. Uh, you see here a couple of sensors that we are using, how they look inside. I'm going to share, by the way, the presentation uh, with, with you guys on my webpage. You can download it, you will get the schematics. Uh, you see how we did the soldering in our pizza oven and much, much more. There's a fritzing, in case people are using fritzing for their breakout boards, design for, for the board, so you can go with that. We have the OLED display, and so on and so on. So let's let's use the remaining minutes just to give you a little bit um, of insight how, how that goes. Uh, I need to switch quickly to one application I want to show to you. Basically, to kickstart a development, the only thing what you use uh, need to use is a coin cell. This little guy, plug in the coin cell and um, it should get running in a second. So it waked up, the blue light shows that it waked up. And I have on my smartphone now an application called TechBasic. TechBasic is, um, so I just need for development TechBasic on the iPhone and this little guy and off it goes. I switch back to this TechBasic application. So this basic an application running on, on the iPhone as such. And in case we are lucky, we get a uh, Bluetooth connection indication here. So now it's connected to my iPhone. And I'm going back to the Tech Basic application. And if all things goes well, I hope, you see now um, it needs a while to get the data. Buffer is sort of flashed. OK, now it's going. Now you see I'm moving the sky. The black line that you see is the um, altitude. So I'm raising my hand and the black line goes up. I'm going down and, and uh, just follow the black line. The black line goes down. Yeah, so I can very precisely detect I'm, I'm moving. And um, you see, it stops suddenly. Um, as soon as I'm not shaking the device, it falls into sleep mode. So I, I need to keep it busy, yeah? 
And uh, now you can see when I move it up and down, it detects the g-forces. The, the red, green, and blue line are the three um, axes of the uh, accelerometer. So I just like to clean it up a little bit that you see it better. And when follow maybe the green line, um, the green line, I just move it like this, and the green line flips down. You see that? The green line goes up, and when I put it that way, the green line, line goes down. So I know exactly how this thing is going to move in space. With that, I can now do things like put it on a belt, sit on a chair, and you get a pattern how it looks like when you sit on a chair. Make your application out of it. And, and that, that's basically what, what, what you can do with that. Pretty straightforward, in a couple minutes, an application. Um, you get the data on your phone, you can run an application on, on your iPhone uh, to manage the data, to process the data, and take it from there, build your application, be, be, um, be creative. And, and maybe the last thing, I just need to see how much time we have left. I'm over time already. One minute? Okay. So we're perfect in time. Um, last thing I want to show you is, is that little guy. We basically built a crazy thing. I don't know what it is and what it will be, but at least it's a cube. So you see it, it, ha it has a lot of LEDs around. Uh, there are 700 LEDs, um, just powered by, by these two AA batteries. So when you know an LED takes 20 milliampere roughly, 700 running with the word is multiplexal. That, that, that's the secret how we do it. So there's only one or two LEDs at the same time on. Uh, the other ones, it's just an, an, an visual effect that, that looks like that all uh, LEDs are. So, so now get, guess what we do with that. When I move it, um, the little guy we call Platinchen or blue ID, LED is, is waking up. Now it detects that this, this, this side of the cube is up. When I move it around, it detects this side is up. Now we can make a game, for instance, just catching the green, green um, things. And when you got all the three uh, green or all the six green sides, you, you have one, for instance, you can make a toy out of it. But more interesting is uh, when you move it around, it becomes your home control device as it's got connected to the Raspberry. You can put the loudspeakers louder, for instance, or you can dice it and whatever it, 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 it shows up, switch your TV station and to, to a random selection, or you can make a dice out of it. So I don't know what, what will happen with that, but it's um, completely 3D printed. There's no screw, no glue, uh, um, glue in. Um, it just snaps together. And if you want to rebuild it, come to us or just get in touch with me. And um, last thing, this is the complete variable in, in sort of an action. You snap it into a 3D printed housing and your wristband is ready to go. You have an LED, you put in the coin cell and, and you're done. And if you want to monitor your plants, you just attach a, a moisture sensor to it. If you want to track um, your kids while doing sports and having a GoPro and measure sensor data, you simply go for a 3D printed housing going into the GoPro holder and you snap in your uh, device in here or the other way around and you can track your sports exercises uh, simply using a GoPro clip holder on your device whatever you want to do. So I'm around, uh, I think I need to break up here. Um, when you have questions, come, just come to me or go to my uh, web page. As you have seen, uh, it's uh, hash blue IoT for the Twitter or fablab dash, uh, fab dash lab EU in case you want to reach out to me. Thanks for your attention and uh, reach out to me if you have any questions.